In 1899, Alex Hartigen is a scientist in New York City, deeply fascinated by time travel. He's a professor at Columbia University, teaching applied mechanics and engineering, but his radical ideas often get him in trouble. Alex is a pen pal of Albert Einstein. One day, on his way to meet his girlfriend Emma in the park, he gets distracted by an early motor car. The driver forgets to use the parking brake while refueling, and Alex steps in to prevent any trouble, earning himself the driver's appreciation. Skipping the flowers, Alex meets Emma at the skating rink and proposes as they walk through the park. Their romantic moment is interrupted when a robber appears, holding a gun. The thug tries to take Emma's engagement ring, and in the struggle, the gun goes off, fatally wounding Emma. She dies in Alexander's arms. Over the next four years, Alexander devotes all his time to his laboratory, tirelessly working on time travel calculations. Finally, he succeeds in building a working time machine. Alexander's choice to isolate himself has caused a rift with his oldest friend, David Philby. When Philby comes to the lab to confront Alexander, it leads to a heated argument. In an effort to bring normalcy back to Alexander's life, Philby invites him to dinner, hoping it would make him leave the lab and return to a regular life. However, Alexander delays the dinner until the following week. After Philby leaves, Alexander comments that in a week, they wouldn't have had this conversation. With the time machine complete, Alexander goes back to the night four years ago to intercept Emma before she would meet his 1899 self. Leading her away from the park, they walk to her apartment. He leaves her on the street briefly to buy flowers. Unfortunately, even though Alexander saved her from the robber, Emma is still injured. She is knocked down and trampled by a horse-drawn carriage outside her apartment. The horses got scared by an early motor car. Alexander sadly understands that if he stops one way Emma could die, another danger might replace it. Feeling disheartened by this realization, he chooses to travel forward in time, hoping to discover if there are any solutions or answers in the future. Using the time machine, Alexander travels to the year 2030 and discovers that efforts are underway to colonize the moon. He heads to the New York Public Library, where he converses with Vox 114, a holographic, artificially intelligent librarian. Despite finding details on various authors like H. G. Wells, Isaac Asimov, Harlan Ellison, and even one of his own papers, Alexander is disappointed to learn that the library lacks information on time travel theory. Vox asserts that such a thing is deemed impossible. Feeling frustrated, Alexander inquires about the time machine but only receives details about H.G. Wells' novel. Dissatisfied, he continues his journey into the future. Seven years later, in 2037, he encounters a problem when the moon mining operation disrupts its orbit. This causes the moon to break apart, sending massive rocks toward Earth. When two military personnel attempt to arrest him, Alexander escapes just in time. He gets into the time machine as the city is being destroyed, but he's knocked out and misses witnessing the destruction. Alexander and his time machine then speed through hundreds of millennia. Waking up, Alexander stops the time machine in the year 800 and 2701 AD and discovers that civilization has regressed to a primitive hunter-gatherer existence. The survivors, calling themselves the Aloy, have made homes on a cliff resembling Manhattan. Alexander forms a connection with a woman named Mara, who is a teacher and one of the few who remembers the time traveler's now outdated language. He also notices that the moon is now shattered into pieces. As Alexander becomes a part of Aloy society, they show him a collection of stone fragments and signs from the old New York. This includes a sign from Tiffany & Co., a piece from the Empire State Building, and tiled panels from the Brooklyn Bridge City Hall subway station. While inspecting the time machine after seeing an Aloy memorial, Mara urges Alex to go back to his own time and take her younger brother Kalen with him. Suddenly, the peaceful Aloy are attacked by Morlocks, menacing ape-like creatures who hunt them for food. The Morlocks capture Mara and take her away. To find her, Alexander is told that the ghost might have the information. It turns out the Aloy are referring to Vox 114, the holographic librarian from before the moon's destruction, who is still functional after all these years. With Vox 114's assistance, Alexander discovers a way into the Morlocks' underground world. However, he is captured and taken to an underground chamber where Mara is held in a cage. 
The Morlock's leader, the Uber Morlock, is waiting. The Uber Morlock reveals their caste-like society, where each caste serves a different role. The ruling caste consists of super-intelligent telepaths, while the hunters Alex encountered were bred to be predators. The Uber Morlock tries to justify their actions, stating that they are not evil, and questions Alexander, asking, who are you to question 800,000 years of evolution? He also hints at the existence of other clans similar to his own. The Uber Morlock explains to Alexander that he's stuck in a temporal paradox. Emma's death was the main reason he built the time machine. If he tries to change it, the timeline would be affected because he wouldn't have built the machine without her death driving him. The Uber Morlock adds that the Morlocks owe their existence to people like Alexander who pursue science and technology. Alexander discovers that the Morlocks were people who decided to live underground after the moon's collapse, while the Aloy faced the fallout above. The Morlocks found his time machine and took it underground. To escape, Alexander jumps into the machine, sending it hurtling forward in time with the Uber Morlock. They fight until Alexander pushes the Uber Morlock outside the time sphere. He witnesses the Uber Morlock aging and dying beyond the time bubble. Slowing down the time machine, Alexander sees the sky above, realizing he's in the year 635,427,810 AD. The landscape has turned into a barren wasteland, completely controlled by the Morlocks. Finally accepting that he can't save Emma, Alexander goes back in time to rescue Mara. After freeing her, he sets the time machine to travel to the future and jams the controls with his pocket watch. This causes a malfunction and explosion, creating a time distortion stream. Alexander and Mara escape just in time, and the explosion eliminates the Morlocks. Stuck in the future, Alexander decides to create a new life with Mara. They work together to reconstruct civilization, with Vox sharing stories with the Aloy. This final scene is contrasted with a sequence in 1903, where David Philby talks to Alexander's elderly housekeeper, Mrs. Watchett, 